In this video I'm going to show a couple different uses for the different uh, dimension tools. So for this particular stone I'm going to want to show the dimensions of the stone and the base uh, to send it off to a manufacturer. Even though this is pretty simple I'm just going to do that anyway. So for the dimension tools I'm going to use the horizontal or vertical dimension for this particular one and I will just start here so I'll click and drag and then I'll let go at the bottom and you can see it says 24 inches there when I let go then I drag again to where I want the dimension to be and click again to and then place that dimension so if I want to do the right to left one I will click and drag let go, move the mouse, and click again to place the dimension. I'll do the same thing for the base. Click, drag, let go, drag across, click again to do my dimension line. Click and drag down, and let go. Oop, that didn't quite grab where I needed to, so let's make sure that I'm grabbing at the edge here. Um, I might have actually clicked on the uh, the line there. So I'll make sure I start at my node down here, click and drag across, and then go down. So that gives me dimension lines there. Um, actually before before that I probably uh, should have done something else and that is if we go to the object manager and if you don't see the object manager over there you can go up to tool or sorry window, dockers, object manager here, or you can click on the plus sign here and you'll be able to get to it up there. So the object manager shows us all those dimensions and what I want to do is I want to create a layer and I'm going to call it dimensions and hit enter. That way I can click here, shift click down all the way to where it says text and then I'm going to drag and drop that up onto the dimension layer. The reason that I'm doing this is because if I want to hide those dimensions it's really easy to just hit this hide button and hide them all at the same time so I'm not showing that entire layer. And also because I can um, set that to you know be printable or locked so that I can't edit it that sort of stuff. Okay, so now I'm going to do uh, show another use of a different uh, dimension tool, and that's the segment dimension tool. So with the segment dimension tool, it will give you the size or the length between um, nodes instead of actually, you know, from one click to the next, it's actually finding nodes. So if I just click and drag like that, it found the beginning and ending node of my chamfer there. So I can go ahead and come down and it will say that it's 22.08 inches there. Same thing I can grab from here to here and do a dimension line and that'll say that it's 28 inches from there to there. I could also come and just click and drag that way and it would say that that's 4 inches from there to there. So using the uh, segment dimension tool can be helpful um, just in being able to find, you know, I, I could have clicked, I guess, from node to node, um, but you can also go from one segment to the next or from, you know, half. So I could grab from there to there and say how long it is from there to there. So uh, different options. But, all right, so we've got that one. The next one is parallel dimension. Parallel dimension will actually let you go at an angle. So I could go from, let's say, here to here and then shoot it up. Obviously, that's a little bit crazy because of our size, so we can change our, our line width here to something smaller. Uh, we can also change our text size if we wanted to to something smaller. So we can edit that as, as much as we need to. Um, not that you would necessarily want to even show that, but that's kind of how the parallel dimension tool works. And I'm just hitting Control Z to undo to get back to where I was before. 
So the parallel dimension tool can be used for figuring out how much space you have between things. Um, I typically use the freehand line tool, but this might even be a better option in that you can click here and drag up and it will tell you on the fly how much room that is. So that says only 0 0.05 inches. So I might even want that line to be thickened a little bit. You can hit escape while you're dragging so that it doesn't end up creating a line. And that's just to give an on-the-fly um, value there. So that says from there to there is 0.25 inches. Um, because I didn't hit escape, it went ahead and created my dimension. I'll just hit Control z to undo. But it's nice that you can click and drag and get a dimension there on the fly. And you, it'll even let you get a perpendicular dimension line there. Okay, so that's one use for that. Oop. I didn't hit escape again. I should have hit escape. So I hit control Z instead to undo. Another use for dimension lines then can also be for figuring out how tall our text is. So if I wanted to click from here, drag down, and come across, that would give me three inches there, but for the text it makes more sense to rotate to force it horizontally. And it's a little bit distracting to have those lines go all the way across, so or maybe just the line style itself. Because I'm going to end up doing multiple versions of this, I want to go ahead and change my style, so I will go up to Window, sorry, t yeah, Window, Dockers, and Object Styles. I actually already had it open, but Object Styles here. And under Default Object Properties, there's Dimension. And I want to switch this then. You can get to the, the same thing up here, um, but because these are defaults, I'm going to change it for default so that it changes for every one that I'm going to create instead of just for this particular one. So let's say we actually we can do a hairline to see what it looks like and that's not too bad. Um, oh, but it also switched our text back the other way. So we would want to come down here and click on this one which forces it horizontally and then just hit apply. So that's not too bad. Um, but if if we wanted to, we could also come up and instead of hairline, just say none and hit apply. And that way it won't even give us a line at all. So it just depends on what we want to do. But now that I've set that as our default here, I can go ahead and grab my dimension tool and come in and grab some more. So I will do a dimension line from here to here. And I will do one from here to here, and from here to here. And I'm just using my mouse to zoom in uh, just so that I can get pretty accurate. And actually, I probably should have grabbed from the top of the seven, not the top of the one. Because the one does stick up a little bit. So I'll, let me undo that a little bit, and I'll come back to the L instead. So I'll grab from the L. I'm going to turn off grid snapping. I just want to snap to the top of that. There we go. And on the P, grab from there to there, and across. So I've got all of those. Oh, we've got one more here. So I'll go click, drag, and across. And on this one, I suppose we could, it's kind of a special font, so I'll just grab from there to here, somewhere in here. That's the baseline, I guess. So we can go that way. Oops. Click and drag across. All right. <clears throat> so I, if I click and drag this one out, I can actually click on this one and holding shift, 
I can select all of these. So I'm just hitting shift to select all of them and then I'll finally hit shift to select this one and then just hit C on the keyboard and that will then center the rest of these to that particular one. And this one once again um, I probably grabbed it the wrong size so if I hit V we'll see that it's going off of uh, it was going off of the top of the two instead so I should probably change that um, I'll delete that one and, and start a new one so we'll just go from the top of the seven this time there we go hit V again to go back into enhanced shift select the three hit C on the keyboard oops I didn't want to you don't want to do that with the whole dimension, just with the with the number. So shift select, hit C, hit C. Sorry, I hit the wrong number. All right, so that gives us all of our text. And if we wanted to, we could even select those and change the color of that text so that it's separated from these values. But once again, because we're on the dimension layer if we wanted to we could just hide all those at the same time which is pretty nice also because when it comes to plotting um, if you plot if you run plot page on something that's got dimension lines it will actually crash right now it's a bug that I need to get fixed so try not to do that please um, but that gives you the ability to select this stuff just the stuff you want here or I guess I need to go even further down just select those things and throw it to the plot page as opposed to uh, it crashing so that's a good thing and I'll just right click and say delete on this right click and say delete because I don't really need that one but we'll show these dimensions again hit F4 to zoom to all and you can kinda see that now it's a little bit crazy so um, I don't know that I'd necessarily want to do this, but another thing with dimensions too is um, so if I were to grab all this and shrink my stone down, it actually shrinks my dimensions because I shrink my stone. So if I was shrinking it down to like page size or something, it would mess up those dimensions. So I'm going to undo that real quick and on our dimension line itself if we come over to dynamic dimensioning here we go so if we uncheck dynamic dimensioning and I'll just uncheck it for these two pieces if we uncheck it as we drag this to make it smaller you'll see that that 42 and 24 actually stay as opposed to the rest of them that switched so if you're going to be resizing things it might make more sense in your style in your object style to go ahead and uncheck the dynamic dimensioning for all of them and that way it won't it won't change as you resize things but that's just a quick tutorial on uh, using dimension lines for uh, sending off to a manufacturer or for checking sizing on things or for even showing maybe text sizing you can also make this you know easier or you can change I guess the style of the text uh, because my lines hidden I can't really see it so I'll just hit V and then I'll click on it here so you can check change it from decimal to fractional for instance and that way you've got uh, three and a quarter inch so fractional might be a better idea for stuff like this with text just because it might look a little bit nicer.